What's cracking, big dogs? This one's for you, my Asian women out there, baby. Uh, this is the Bunk Bed Breakdowns podcast, Big Dogs' own dynasty show. I am joined as uh, sometimes I'm usually not on here, actually, but that's Noah to my left. That's Michael below me. Make sure you're going to follow both of them on Twitter. If you do go follow them on Twitter, you will be entered into a Big Dogs Draft Guide giveaway. We've been working very hard behind the scenes on a rookie dynasty guide. It is live right now, bigdogsdraftguide.com. But as long as you follow these two assholes on Twitter, you will be automatically entered into a free draft guide giveaway. Today, we are doing a full mock draft, startup dynasty mock draft, because we actually just started one today. Uh, we are about eight hours into it. It's us three, Snacks, Animal, Scott, a lot of the big dog team, and a lot of the dudes that participated in the NYC draft log weekend. Uh, so it's been a good one so far. Uh, we've ripped off, I think, 25 or 26 picks. We're going at a really good pace. We've had like fucking 12 trades, of course, already. I'm, I'm honestly uh, surprised we haven't had more. But in honor of the startup draft uh, going on, we're going to do a little mock draft action. So we have filled the sleeper draft room with 11 of our Discord members. If you are not in our Discord already, make sure you join that completely free. Uh, that's where you can get into a Dynasty startup. We'll link that in the description down below. So we collectively, uh, like we did with Fade the Public a couple weeks ago, are going to draft via one team. Myself, Noah, and Mike are going to be on the same team picking from the 101. Uh, the rest of the teams have, I think, a 30-second clock. So we'll go through, I don't know, 8 to 10 rounds. We'll see what we feel like when we get down there. This is a super flex mock. This is uh, tight end premium, Mike. Uh, I did not say tight end premium, but let me say that now. Yeah, tight end premium. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to do tight end premium, which basically means uh, it's typically it's a half PPR league. So tight ends get a full point per reception. Uh, we do suggest that you do that when you do startup drafts because – it makes things more fair, right? The same way you play super flex to make quarterbacks a little more relevant. Uh, the tight end premium makes tight ends a little bit more valuable in the drafts. So it's all fun. It's all cheddar. How y'all doing? Are we ready to fucking roll? Hell yeah. yeah. I haven't made uh, a pick yet, so I got to get going here. You're still pickless? Still pickless. Not until Love. the fourth. Love that. But you Love can't that. even make it. You can't even make it a tight end premium in this. It's only like 2QB, Dynasty, half PPR. Is right. that, I think it's just for the settings. It doesn't matter. We'll, I, we'll I, do... I Whatever, yeah, we'll, we'll. It ain't that big of a difference anyway. So we are ready to roll. Noah, FB God, at Mike me up. Somebody hit the fucking intro. All right, draft. Motherfucking commence. All right, uh, 101. This this is a pretty easy pick. Uh, is there Patrick any... Mahomes? No, yeah. sir. Yeah, I I, I, I want to do Patrick Mahomes because I want to I want to do something funny at the turn because that's what we've got 101 for, right? This isn't this isn't. We're not here for laughs, Mike. We're here this for isn't funny. <laughs> this is fucking. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding, dude. It's CMC the God. We all know. Okay, CMC ridiculous. The God. Yeah, hit C Mac. <laughs> C Mac 101. No question about it. There's no. Mike's talked about this endlessly on Twitter and uh, on these episodes before. There's no the, the sell high window for C Mac is not a thing right now. He's he's just like the clear RB one giving you an elite running back and an elite wide receiver in one fucking option. They bring Joe Brady onto the squad. Uh, their their whole team is about to eat through the passing game. No better matchup with fucking Teddy Bridgewater. One oh one. I don't I don't see any other argument there. Yeah. If you yeah, pass I mean, on running back here, the guy you're gonna get at two twelve is like Derrick Henry or JK Dobbins or Scott. <laughs> so the drop off from McCaffrey to them in comparison to Mahomes and like maybe Russell Wilson or Josh Allen at that spot isn't as big as if he were to pass on the running back in McCaffrey. Yeah, yeah we're we saw. I was gonna, I think, if I didn't get traded, if I didn't get traded the 101 in our league, I would have went Patrick Mahomes because I was gonna, I was gonna do something funny. But uh, you know, now that I traded Toby, I'm not doing it anymore. But it's, you just it's true. Right? Your money, Mike. I wish I had that type of freedom. It, but like, if you look at it, right, it, it's just like it's so wild because like you'd much rather have like Christian McCaffrey plus like Carson Wentz and Josh Allen later than Patrick Mahomes plus like Derrick Henry. You know, so I think it's like a pretty obvious choice. But you know, everyone loves. I, it I don't. I don't know it, when you look at it that way though. Like Mahomes plus a uh, Derrick Henry is not that further off from a C Mac and I mean you said Josh Allen but you could probably get uh, a better quarterback maybe at the turn depending on how lucky I guess you are like our the draft that we just did the, the draft that we're participating in right now I think what was it one two three four five six six of the first eight picks were running backs and then ten of the first uh, fifteen picks or whatever were running backs too so it's very like it's very league dependent and we do have. Uh, we have the ADP set up, Mike, right? You, why don't you talk on yep. that for a second? 
Yeah, so we've been uh, collecting uh, BDG ADP for the Big Dogs Paid Leagues. Uh, shout out to Westron, who helped me build like a quick tool to pull some of the Sleeper API. Um, oh, yeah. But I compiled that together last night across about, I think it was like 20-some-odd leagues, and I'll just keep adding to it as we go. But we're going to have half PPR, tight end premium, premium ADP, and we're going to have half PPR, non-tight end premium, both super flex ADPs. So you guys are going to be able to really pull it from like paid leagues. So no bullshit, no like mock drafts. None of this stuff where like a lot of other sites put on stuff that's like mock drafted with like experts and stuff. Because dude, when it comes down to it, you're playing with fucking friends, right? You're not playing with a bunch of like analysts. So who gives a fuck what they pick, right? You want to you want to see what are like real people also, with real money like, are picking. Most, most people that do the mock drafts in like the expert leagues, most guys like don't even really play Dynasty. So I honestly trust the people in our audience picking more than i trust most of the analysts out there that do it because they're just kind of switching the dynasty to ride the wave and most of them don't actually play yeah i mean and also like a bunch of fraud you know, there's, there's there's money involved here right like a lot of mock drafts like people would do shit and try stuff they don't normally do like but in money like in these money drafts it's going to incorporate trades i think that is the key thing because you need to incorporate trades in my opinion because it really shows the true value of players if people will move up and move down to try and acquire their players at value Whereas uh, if you're doing a mock draft and you can't trade, that's not a realistic draft, right? Because in Dynasty, you're going to make trades. So yeah. our drafts include trades, include everything. It's going to be fucking lit. This is probably like the most hyped I've been about uh, a, I don't know, I guess about anything for a while. A Mainly because I didn't sleep, <laughs> sleep last night doing Jeez, it. Mike, but, make um, sure your girlfriend doesn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, she doesn't watch her episode, so I think I'm safe. Fair enough. I don't know if yeah. she's creeping in the background. All right, so we've had <laughs> six quarterbacks go off the board. Mahomes, Lamar, Deshaun, Kyler, Dak, Russell Wilson. This seems to be the tendency of most startup leagues right now. There's like a there's a big tier drop off after these six, and I feel like it's basically worth waiting on if you're around this yeah. area. If you miss out on the quarterbacks, um, we're seeing some guys slip a little further. George Kittle all the way at the 112, so tight end premium. I was able to Money. get him at the uh, at the 210 in our startup, which I was fucking ecstatic about uh anything else on the board you see that it's worth discussing yeah I yeah i mean kyler going to 2.4 you're not going to see that very often at all derrick henry at the 1.9 the guy that picked uh <laughs> derrick henry and kyler murray probably should have reversed those picks he could have gone kyler <laughs> murray 1.9 and derrick out. henry 2.4 but it still worked out for him so that's like that's pretty late deshaun watson going at 1.10 that's exactly where i have him in my rankings but he's been slipping a lot as well so you know pretty interesting stuff we're yeah, I think Jack went on, on an hour league, and he went 2.6 right here. So that's I feel that's pretty good value because I would take him ahead of Watson, in my opinion, and behind yeah. Kyler Murray. All right, pause this real quick. How We're on I the pause? clock. We got two picks in a row. We'll just pause okay. the uh, yeah, pause yeah. the okay, chat so it. we could talk a little bit more pause. about it. Yeah. So now we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of these. It's funny because our audience and the people that we play with have this very distinct, like the age apex in their mind of of receivers that they're kind of trying to fade earlier on in the draft. And uh, we saw Adams fall really late in our draft. DeAndre Hopkins and Mike Evans are both still on the board, and we're at the 304, I believe. So this, I think, opens up. I don't know which running backs are left because Noah's the only one in the draft, so he would have to, I guess. But all the I rookies are still left, right? You don't see the you don't see the running backs. I see them. I don't know. I'm not in the draft. Um, you can't access the board. I could see the board. I just can't see the like the player ranking list. Like uh, who's actually okay. left? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. This this seems like I mean. We got all the rookies left. Like I think we're about to double tap rookies right here. That's yeah, what I, say. I was gonna too. say. Yeah, I'm 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 cool because we're done with the first quarterback tier. Uh, I think tight ends. I think this is too early for Kelsey given his age, but it's also a little bit too early for probably Andrews, just given the fact that I don't know, I don't know how involved he gets in in full PBR leagues. You know, um, if that I don't I don't think comes. it's too early, just because I mean you expect him to keep kind of taking that step back. I mean he's. He's supposed to be like the next up and coming risers. I mean, I would I would take Andrews over Kelsey most of the time, probably. And yeah, but the thing is, it's only one point five PPR, so it's not as exaggerated. And you know, he still needs to, to see target volume. But at the end of the day, like I think he was playing like less than half the snaps last year, but he was running he was. a ton of routes. And yeah. but now Hayden Hurst is gone, so you can kind of see that uptick going there. And they really didn't add any you know receivers of note, unless you actually think Duvernay is good. So watch it, Mike. Uh, watch it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, uh, I would be okay with Andrews as well, to be honest, but I think it's just really strong to double tap running back and go triple RB. You want to go JT and Clyde Edwards? I think so. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that. I don't think it's realistic to see them here because they're super far down the board on sleeper. Like, CEH is number 65 and JT is number 98 overall. They'll typically go earlier than this, but they're going to give them to us. We'll take them. Yeah, All right, I'm yeah. resuming the draft. All right, cool. So Clyde, JT. Um, I mean, wide receivers that were still left on the board... 
Yeah, uh, probably Julio, no one I would have loved. Amari. DJ Moore probably would have yeah. been my pick if we did go with wide receiver, but uh, I'm, I'm happy we went with running backs. Now we have we have three guys that I think, you know, in 20, man, maybe not this year, but by next year we probably have three RB1s legit, and that's what makes you compete for a championship. Yep. This is crazy. Juju Smith-Schuster is ranked lower than Devontae Parker on here. Really? Yeah. Love that. Oh, that guy found him, I guess. Jonathan, John, accept my fucking trade. <laughs> I just oh, wanted to see if somebody sent me something. Yeah, I, I would definitely take DJ Moore over Juju Smith-Schuster, but I have him pretty close, to be honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where Juju falls in our uh, startup draft. I hope he it's falls just to me. It's a safety thing. Because Juju falls. has hit that peak, but the fact that he's now one year removed from that and the quarterback situation is kind of iffy after this year with Big Ben's health, like... At least DJ Moore did it with nobody around him and nobody throwing him the ball. Juju really didn't do that. And I know he was hurt last year, but uh, if you're picking in the first couple of rounds, you definitely want that safety and that floor, and that's where you go with DJ Moore over Juju. Yeah. Mark N99 is following a very similar strategy to us, also double-tapping running backs here. He's got Zeke, Nick Chubb, and Aaron Jones. So I, I'd say that you know he might even have a better case for uh, oh. for the running back core this year, but going uh-huh. forward, I would, I would take our core easily, easily. Yeah, I like our future. I, I think he definitely puts up a fight with what we have, though. So now we're seeing the running backs go. Jones, Fournette, They're Austin Eckler. This is where I'd fucking trade up and try to snag some maybe t- Andrews or a wide receiver or something. Yeah, I'm surprised Andrews is still not gone. This is mm-hmm. going to be great value for somebody. Uh, we saw Josh Allen go. So Josh Allen's kind of sitting at the top of that, you know, the second tier of quarterback. Like, where are you guys at on Josh Allen? Is that it's where early, you guys have? It's too early for me. I still think there's way too much. For him to be going, like, six picks behind Russell Wilson, there's still too much too much uncertainty with Josh Allen, like, who he is as a player. So, yes, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fading him, but, like, if you have to reach up that, that high, I would rather just take someone that I'm super uh, confident that's going to be stable for the next two to three years. Like, I'd rather wait around and get, you know, Matt Ryan um, than this, this crazy upside of Josh Allen. He's not, you know, he's not Cam Newton. He's not going to have prolific you know mvp type passing season so he, he definitely scares me that early yeah yeah pure rankings wise i would definitely have him in that same not in that tier but right after russell wilson but when right. you think you can get like ryan Tannehill in the fifth or sixth round or like nick said like a matt ryan a little bit later who isn't going to give you anything on the ground but can do a lot with his arm like that's just way too good of a value to be able to take josh Allen at the three three we can get those guys two three rounds later and get skill positions instead yeah dude i got ryan Tannehill at a pick uh, 63, so in the fifth round of a 14, 14 teamer, uh, and he went after Jimmy Garoppolo, Drew Locke, Justin Herbert. Like I'm easily hey, smashing Justin Herbert. That's, I'll, I'll allow that, but <laughs> after Jimmy G, that's awful. Yeah, yeah. See, like Carson Wentz going, teamer. Carson Wentz going all the way at the 311 compared to Allen at the 33 is like something. Yeah, exactly. I don't think that should be happening. So we're uh, getting the. This, I, this is interesting, man. Startups are always fun to fucking see how things play out. Yeah, I have Carson Wentz uh, above Josh Allen. He actually leads up my like second tier of quarterbacks for me. Ooh, we see Doctor Doom going a zero RB strategy, uh, zero RB and zero QB. I actually like Pretty his. Risk. The pass catchers are fucking nice though that he stacked up here. Yeah, yeah. If that was full PPR, three, three nines a little bit too early. What? For a dirty Joe S. Kenyon Drake at the three nine. Yeah, Kenyon Drake's been going a little bit early. He just went to like, 3-2 in our fucking league, which is yeah, was, <laughs> which was shocking to me. Yeah, really I mean, fun. like, we, we've laid out the case. He, he's definitely in store for a big year this year, considering the only thing they added was um, was a uh, fucking, what's his you name? You know Benjamin? You know, you know Benjamin, Benjamin in the seventh round, yeah. So there's obviously a lot to like for this year, but he's just one of those those running backs where, like, we might get to the end of next year, and we're like, he's contractless, right? And now you're looking at a... A uh, yep. 27-year-old running back who doesn't oh have an, my an actual contract, and it's just <laughs> like you know he's someone who who you could easily see have his value diminish quickly. Yeah, dude, these back-to-back picks, extremely good value on Mark Andrews, followed by just awful value on Todd dude. Gurley at the 4.3. <laughs> Look at that team, plank crew. I like that mixing Cook, Wentz, Andrews. Yeah, strong team. That's just really a great balance. Great very, balance. Very strong. Yeah, Daily Boy really, started off really strong, and then. Kind of Man, Aaron. Oh, Aaron Rodgers! What the <laughs> fuck is going on here? He Aaron Rodgers. Who has right there? Okay, so uh, there goes the Matt Ryan. Um, these are going. Yeah, here goes the quarterback run. I kind of like being at the turn, though. You know, I, yeah. I like I like being able to just like stock up on whoever the fuck you want and having to wait for the next pick. Yeah, you can also start runs too because I don't think I've ever been in a draft where I just 
stayed with the picks I originally had. Like, I would never play this out. And it seems like every time I do a mock draft and stay put, I like my team better than when I trade. <laughs> Same. Oh, it's amazing that you find it to be that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, so Mark is clearly going for it right now. He's got the three running yeah. backs, went with Julio in the 4A, which I think is about the right spot. I think a lot of people will look at Julio and be like, oh, my God, has he dropped there? But you also got to remember, he's old as shit. He's someone who, you know, one, yeah. one bad red flag hits him, and, like, it could be over for him. So yeah. I think those days of him being, like, a second-round startup pick are, are far behind him. I think he's still a top-five, like, wide receiver, though. Like, Julio's just one of those guys where, like, I can never find myself drafting him in a startup because in a startup I want to be flexible. I don't know if I'm going to go all in yet, but if I'm like a contending team, I'm firing out offers for Julio 100% because I think he'll still be a top five wide receiver for at least this year, not longer. OBJ at the 411. I'm going to pause the draft real quick. So yes. just, yeah, let's talk about that team. Evans, Juju, Odell. That's like the all hype team of last year startups. Like that, those, <laughs> those are like top three, top five wide receivers from last year whose value all diminished going into this yeah. year. So he's looking uh, for that bounce bike. I actually like it. Uh, I mean, look, I think OBJ, like he played last year with a sports hernia, uh, finally got the offseason injury, injury. I mean, I don't think we're going to see like prime OBJ wide receiver, like wide receiver one overall again upside because, you know, we don't know what we're going to see from that offense and Stefanski being there being probably a run first approach. But I think he's getting disrespected a bit too much to the point where I'm like, OK, I'm looking at him in startups now. I'm gonna yeah, be... I think the biggest hernia that Odell had to play with was Freddie Kitchens. And I know Stefanski <laughs> wants to run the ball a lot, but... You remember back to last year, they also had Kubiak, and Adam Thielen was hurt for a lot of the year, and they didn't really have much else other than Stephon Diggs, even though we wanted Ola B.C. Johnson to be good. good. And obviously, Dalvin Cook's a really good running back, so uh, I don't expect them to be as run-heavy as Minnesota, and I still think OBJ is going to get his because he's by far and away the best receiver on that team, even after adding Austin Hooper, who I personally don't think is that good. I'm curious. Uh, I'm going to talk to Dr. Morris tomorrow. He's coming on the channel for Thursday's video. Uh, so for when you guys are watching today, it's going to be tomorrow. And uh, I'm, I'm very curious to hear his thoughts on, on Odell Beckham just because he's had such an injury, injury riddled like last three years, you know, and some of them are yeah. related, some of them are unrelated. But either way, it's uh, it, it's certainly a risky pick. But I mean, at the fucking 411 in a dynasty league, it feels like that is uh, definitely, definitely uh, too late for him to go off. So who do we have? Uh, give me like top names off the board. One guy I'm thinking of without seeing who's left. Uh, I almost want to tap back into the rookie running backs and go with DeAndre Swift here with one of them. I was thinking yeah. Joe Burrow too. He's still there. I was thinking I was thinking double tap in rookie quarterbacks, but I'm also fine with Dobbins. Mm. Joe Burrow, Burrow Dobbin, is fine too. Dobbins already off the board, no? Oh, is he gone? Okay, yeah. Then we could do like Acres or Swift uh, plus a plus a quarterback. What color are running backs on your green? Oh green, yeah, he just yeah, won. He went at the four nine. Uh, who else is okay? So the top three tight ends are gone. So that's that tier. Uh, what what kind of wide receivers are we looking at on the board right uh, now? Sutton, Diggs, A. Rob. <laughs> Uh, Debo, DK Metcalf, DJ Chark, Keenan Allen. You know, keep keep yeah. going, keep going. Uh, Tyler Boyd, Gallup, Jarvis Landry, Terry McLaurin. Hey, that's the name we were looking for. <laughs> nah, we didn't no. look for that. Uh, okay, so four twelve five one. I yeah, if I if I had to choose, I'm I'm down with uh, De I'm down with double double tapping quarterbacks, but I'm also definitely down for uh, DeAndre Swift slash because we don't I don't think we're gonna need the instant production from running back, so I feel like Swift kind of fits our team uh, pretty well in terms of like what we're building right now. I, over I, I would, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely swift over acres at this point. I think at dynasty, I, I don't know. I don't like what they're saying over there in LA, how they're just like, we want to use all our fucking running backs. I'm like, why <laughs> the rest of them are fucking so bad. Why do you want to use everyone besides acres? So, I mean, but they're, they're going to say that though, right? Like we don't, I mean, I don't know. I want to see what preseason snaps look like and everything looks like before I make call, but like, they're just not going to come out and say, Hey, like the rest of our running backs are trash and just lose their entire veteran room. Better room, know. but all right. Jonathan made his pick. Okay, he took D Hop. That's for, I forgot. He fucking uh, isn't he? Uh, he's not a Texans fan. He won the D Hop signed jersey uh, last yeah. weekend. Do you remember? Or signed helmet? <laughs> yeah. Let's funny. let's 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 get double. Let's double click on either. I think either go Burrow plus Tua or Burrow plus Swift. That's my. Vote. I said Burrow and Swift. We got to just get the monopoly on running backs. Yeah, all I right, like that. Let's, let's hit it. Burrow I'm pausing. Swift. I'm resuming. Four backs. This is how you fucking build Ooh, a baby. strong this team. A sexy team right here. Yeah. We're taking advantage of sleeper right now. Kind of yeah. like it, too. So. I'm uh, going to hit, bang. I mean, We're gonna hit these, bang bang on Ryan Tannehill later, and we'll have these a fucking sick fools. ass. So wide receivers. Yep. I mean, I'd be pumped if we got some kind of uh, – we, we're a lot of picks away, actually. If we got A-Rob, that'd be money, but probably not going to get no him. Way. So I was going to say A-Rob, say... Chark, Terry, fucking Debo, Metcalf, and then a quarterback. Like any of those guys I'd be cool with. Yeah. I think if we land Robert Woods as a as a wide receiver one, I'd be 
super comfortable with that. Yeah, Robert Woods cool won like eighth round in so many leagues is ridiculous to me. Yeah. The guy's like 28 years old and people think he's 35. <laughs> That's because you've been teaching them that as soon as you're 20, <laughs> 23, you're fucking 30. On to that math, they're like, man, Chris McCaffrey's 30 already. <laughs> yeah, me and him went on a fucking Twitter thread for about 50 fucking minutes after that, just throwing out dumb shit back and forth. Johnny that. says, Noah keeps sniping me. Good. Good. Uh, there goes Mac. Pick number four. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Brett. Brett, you remember when you took Baker at the three-one? Well, he just went at the five. <laughs> he just went at the five-five. Uh, dude, I can't believe he gave Scott that move up for free. I was like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, that was bad. Not the best. <laughs> uh, Scott sends an offer and it gets processed. I just don't even see it. I just like, <laughs> look away. Gets me so angry. Scott Father. <laughs> oh, Devin Singletary and Chris Carson. This is a lot earlier than what I would expect it in the 5-7 and the 5-8. Yeah, I'm back surprised back. Zach Moss didn't go yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys think about DK Metcalf going ahead of guys like uh, Robert Woods, you know, Tyler Lockett even, and, you know, your favorite, Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuel? Like, I think D- DK Metcalf is getting a little bit too high for me to actually go for him, which is a shame because I actually do like him. I still don't think we. I, I still don't think like he's going to realize his ceiling anytime soon. Like I still think he's the wide receiver too in a in an offense that's not pass heavy at all. You know, like that's not yeah. a good that's not a good formula um, for someone. Yeah, who Tyler you're... Lockett was so good last year. Before he like destroyed his calf, he was on pace for like twelve hundred yards and ten touchdowns, like ninety receptions. Like he was the number one in that offense. And DK Metcalf did step up huge in the playoffs, but. You know, a few, a few big performances isn't going to destroy the chemistry that Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett have had these past two or three years. Yeah, yeah. The, chem- the chemistry they have is, is so fucking good together, and that's not going away anytime soon. And Tyler Lockett's still so explosive. He's not going to lose that for a long time. He had that touchdown. I think it was against the Rams in the back of the end zone. I was watching on red zone. He just, like, looped it up, and there was nobody over there, and he just toe taps and catches it. The so guy's, good. like, five foot nine, but he makes ridiculous catches. They just always seem to be on the same page whenever he rolls out. And it's basically Doug Baldwin 2.0, and I don't doubt that when he's like 30, 31, 32, he's going to still produce if he's still in Seattle. He's a way more explosive, yep. Doug Baldwin, too. So you know those seasons are coming. I mean, yeah, like last year he was, he was fucking – oh, my God. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> David Johnson at the 6-2. When there are still guys like Robert Woods, fuck you, Larry, <laughs> Joe, you piece of shit. Double tapping on DJ Chark and Terry McLaurin after it's taking like Max Aaron Rodgers. not even in the draft with Derrick is- Henry and Cat McLaurin. This is a lot lower than I've seen uh, Daniel Jones go, and even Jared Goff. To be honest, I think that's a pretty good value for for quarterback. I think I, re- I really I like Doctor Doom's team, with the exception of David Montgomery. But even David Montgomery at the five twelve seems like pretty good. You know, he's like the cheapest. Yeah, what, like two hundred fifty touches he can buy right now, probably. Yeah, like what other running back are you gonna take there? Like he needed one. You know, there's not there's yeah. not much there's not much else you're gonna get production wise all the way down here. So I'm glad we kind of filled out our running back spots, and now oh, we're yeah. kind of left to uh, look at Keenan going six six. Dude, he's the most disrespected wide receiver right now, man. So disrespected. But like, how much? Like, how well do you think he's really going to perform with Tyrod, man? I don't know. Uh, I mean, he's he's been like a wide receiver one literally every single season. They got chemistry, I believe. I believe that they have chemistry. James mm-hmm. Connor. There goes Lockett. Ah, fuck. Ooh, I CD Lamb. CD. I wanted CD. CD to fall to us bad. The first, the first rookie wide receiver off the board. That seems uh, about right, you know, in the seventh round. That's kind of where I have rookie wide receivers going. Uh, what, uh, but he's been going a little bit earlier. What uh, what wide receivers we got on on like what, who are we looking at right now target wise? I can't. Robert I can't. Woods uh, would Devo, be one of my Tyler targets. Boyd, Devo, AJ Green. Boy, Devontae Parker, what another you just great say? great value. They're all out of whack. I gotta like scroll all over the place to find. I them. I, I like uh, I forget who the other one you said was after that. I, I like a Woods Debo or a Woods. Uh, who was the other one you said? There was someone else you said. Boyd. Nah, not Boyd. I wouldn't take Boyd over someone else. I think. Uh. Might have just I said Wood. Parker. I said Parker. Oh yeah, I said I, I. I'm fine with any of the three combination of Woods, Parker, uh, Woods, Parker, Debo. All right, let's pause here and talk about something real quick. So, uh, you know, you see it here, and you're gonna see it everywhere. Where running backs are just flying off the board, and the reason why you gotta take them early is because you're looking at guys like Bell and David Johnson later on. Um, so, you know, we always say like, don't draft for need, like, don't react to runs. But here's the thing, right? If everybody is running, and you're fucking walking, you're gonna get left behind. So if you have to reach a little bit in the early rounds for a couple of a couple of stud running backs, it's fine because everyone is doing it, and there's going to be wide receiver values that fall. Um, you know, obviously it's to like a degree. You know, if if like fucking twelve running backs go off the board in the first round, and you're staring at like Derrick Henry versus like Tyree Kill in the second, 
obviously, you know, you know what to do. But I think, you know, this is like something where like everyone's gonna say like, oh, don't react to runs. But you know, when you react to a run, everybody's running. I think it's still okay. You don't lose that much value. Yeah, when you How get you to the Zachary spot. The turn here? I know he doesn't fit our philosophy, but it's tight end premium, and in the seventh round, I feel like that's a really good value. Yeah, I didn't even actually think about that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate that. I think uh, just to to harp on Mike's point too, like these running backs that you're getting down here. You you know you're getting one year of shelf life. Like Carson, Le'Veon, David Johnson, James Conner, none of them are giving you any sort of value. Like their value is diminishing by the end. They could be top fifteen running backs this year, but you're getting next to nothing out of them in twenty twenty one. Like I already tell you that basically for yeah. a fucking fact. So uh, um, thoughts? I think we got to go Tua here, guys. It's the sixth round, end of the sixth. How about Tannehill? Tannehill we can get later. I think. I think we can get him in like the eighth. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with uh what do you think, Tua and Woods? Yeah, Tua Woods or Tua plus a tight end, I'm fine with that too. Like uh Evan Ingram or something. But I think, yeah, I, think I think Tua Woods. I think Tua, Tua Woods. I, I think the wide receiver makes more sense because we're gonna be yeah. looking at like fucking Hollywood Brown as our wide receiver <laughs> one if we fade Woods here. Yeah. Okay. Are right, we going Tua and Woods? Yeah, let me uh resume the draft. Let's hit it. You love to hear it. Yeah, we have a excellent shelf life on our team here, right? You're looking at the average age here. Christian McCaffrey, 24 years old. Clyde, JT, Swift are all 21 years old. Burrow's a little – he's old as fuck, but whatever. He's a quarterback. Tua's 21 years old. Robert Woods is the only old guy, but, like, he's 28, and that's probably another – at least another three years of prime wide receiver production for us. Yeah, we really have no idea what's going to happen in this fucking Rams offense, to be honest. Like, what's going to happen with Goff? What's going to happen with Cooper Cup? I, I feel like Woods is, like, the only constant there, and I'm – I'm, yeah, I'm definitely more optimistic about Woods than, than most people are for the future. Do you guys remember what he did down the stretch last year when they started moving yeah. to tight end sets? He was on so like 1,500 five. yards. Yeah. That's going to happen again a... this year because they're, I mean, that's what happens when you have a shitty offensive line. You have to move to more 12 personnel to get extra yeah. blocker in there. Uh, also, he's the most versatile guy, so he never has to come off the field. Uh, whereas, like, Cup, you saw Cup starting to come off the field a lot when uh, they had to go to two wide receiver sets because mm -hmm. he's just not, he's just like not good on the outside. Like, if you just look at all the stuff that he's like, he's very good in the slot. He's like elite against zone, but against press, he's just not good. Mm -hmm. uh, so, whereas Robert Woods, he can play flanker, he can play outside, he can play slot. He's just got a lot more movement and mobility to him. So, I love Robert Woods. He's like just one of the best value wide receivers. All right, so we grabbed our guys to a uh, holy fuck. Michael yeah. Pittman, Michael Pittman went Jesus at seven point nine. That's that is insane. way too early. <laughs> Dirty Joe, you son of a bitch. Way too early. Just touching on Woods, looking at his receiving numbers per game from week ten on last year: 95, 97, 172, and zero touchdowns. The Robert Woods famous game: uh, ninety eight in a touchdown. Then he had seventeen, and then one seventeen and sixty seven in a touchdown. So he was like a top five wide receiver almost every single week down the stretch. Yep. What do you guys think about the Keyshawn Vaughn hype? I think he's getting like way out of control. See him going here at the seven point two ahead of like a bunch of starting quarterbacks, ahead of Evan Ingram. Like I think is it's getting too out of control. Like I'm expecting a full blown committee over there. Like I don't think anyone there is gonna be like a stud producer this year. Like what do you guys think? I'm sorry, can you uh who, what backfield were we talking about again? I'm Keyshawn Vaughn. Keyshawn I, Vaughn. Yeah, dude, it's the hype has gotten fucking so far out of control. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I think that's more of a need pick for this guy because all he had was Kareem Hunt. I think 7.2 is way too early for Keyshawn Vaughn because, I mean, Bruce Arians, we remember back to David Johnson's rookie year when he looked much better than anybody else that they had on the team, like returning kickoffs for touchdowns, and he didn't really get a full workload until the very end of the season. So even if Keyshawn Vaughn shows out and Bruce Arians doesn't even like Rojo all that much, I don't see him commanding a heavy enough workload that if you're building a team to compete now, he's going to give you any sort of value unless he's like your fourth or fifth running back that you can wait and start later on. But at this price, that's not going to be the, the situation that you're in. Yeah. Totally agree. Drew Locke, again, another guy that's just going way too high. He's not good, guys. He's not good. You think I mean, he's too high? high? Dude, I would fucking smash. If he came back to us at the A12, I don't think I'd let you pass him up. I would not take him just because of who's left. Like, I'm not taking him ahead of Kirk Cousins. I'm not taking him ahead of Yeah, Ryan we're seeing quarterbacks fall pretty fucking drastically in this. Yeah. We're about to get Gardner Minshew hyped. Hell yeah. Yeah. All in. Uh, um, a lot of options here. I'm thinking we have to go wide receiver again. Uh, I'm I'm looking at guys like Christian Kirk. There goes Marquise. Uh, yeah, I was looking at Marquise, but he's gone. What uh? What I do we got a tight end situation? So Ertz is off. Ingram's gone. Darren Waller. Darren, Darren Waller is there. I don't Hunter hate. Hunt. I don't hate Darren Waller. Uh, he would be my top pick. I'm not. I don't. I don't think I want to 
invest in any anything in that Chargers passing offense, to be honest. That's crazy. Yeah. How about Tyler Higby? What do you feel about that? I love Tyler Higby, dude. I, I think over I've like Waller? Drafted... No, no, no. Like, huh. I like Tyler Higby at cost over Waller. Yeah, yeah. But we're at the end, so we kind of have to reach. So we kind of only have to pick one. I mean, I wouldn't even mind going Waller, Higby, bang, bang. I just did that in another draft, too. The fuck? Someone took Christian Kirk. That's kind of tilting. That's good news for us. We can get two tight ends, and I feel bad yeah. about it. Yeah, oh, fuck. They're no. too. Uh, <laughs> oh, Snipe that City. Painful. Oh, uh, that painful. So who's next guy up for us? Is it Higby on our tight end ranking? Yeah. Much? Yeah. yeah. Do Higby. we have? Do we? Do we fucking double tap into this Rams offense now? This passing offense? I think it's fine. If there's I mean, anybody to do it on, it's these two. But wide receivers are looking pretty thin right now. Who I think we got to grab a quarterback here. Uh, you know, really? Cousins, Tannehill. That's a good value. I mean, like if you're getting if you're getting quarterbacks here, we can always trade them for a wide receiver too. You know, you don't have to draft for a starting roster. We need somebody to start while two is not playing too. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Okay, so we can go. Yeah, you could always flip like a Kirk and a second round pick for like a fourth round wide receiver or some shit. Um, I'm cool with. I'm, I'm not really sure what quarterbacks are on the board, but I, I'm good with like you got a, Tannehill, Minshew, Kirk Cousins, Philip Rivers, uh, Tom Brady, Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, I think it's between Cousins. Tannehill or Minshew. I would say Cousins or Tannehill just because they have more long-term security. Yeah, I would go with I one of them. No. I'll go... Uh, I'll pr- I think I believe a little bit more in Cousins. Uh, yeah, I-, I like that. Let's hit Cousins and... Are we hitting Higby, right? Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, fuck it. Bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, that would have been so sweet to get Waller Higby and just start one in the flex. This team's shaping up nicely. Yeah, I'm loving this squad right now. Fuck, I should have just not traded any of my picks and just drafted the squad. Although there's That's no what way. I'm saying. Like, it just looks so much better when you don't mess with it. But there's no way I would have got Jonathan Taylor or Clyde Edwards. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm on the clock in our actual draft. Should I just pick while we're doing this? Who'd Scott take? Kenny Gallagher. Oh, fuck. I'm an idiot. It's no, you're <laughs> you not notified me about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John, uh, Kyle took Kenny. Kenny so Raheem Mostert. This guy is desperate for. This is why you cannot fade running backs early, guys. And if you do fade running backs early, do not do this. Do not reach for running backs in the dead zone because it's not going to work out in your favor. Like most of these guys are just going to bust out. Just punt the first year and just keep drafting tight ends and wide receivers and quarterbacks. Max just sent me an offer in our league. Any good? Oh, I don't know. It's a player he already picked for two picks that I haven't made yet. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. It's. I'll just say it's the guy that he didn't want when he traded back. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Okay. But I also don't want him. So <laughs> you don't. Want, what's, up with, what's up with all the? I guess he's like the injury risk or whatever. But no, nah, it's it's the price that he wants him for. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Max is now realizing his own mistakes, and he's, he's about trying to, to redo the trade and make him to get it back. He's about to erase. Like I've seen this before. Like I, I did another starting draft where like a guy traded up, and then like three rounds later, he just basically erased like two to three rounds of draft capital, like in a thin air. Uh, it's a sight to behold. I got a trade from Scott. I tried to get his pick. Oh no! And he cover your eyes. I'm so excited. Should I cover my butthole? <laughs> cover every hole because he's coming for all of them. Two trades he sent. Uh, <laughs> he's playing good cop, bad cop with one person. Scott wants my. F- okay, let's see. <laughs> you snack just put his fucking stupid ass tweet in the chat. You see that? Daniel Jones is the best quarterback in the NFL, and to be honest, I don't think it's even close. <laughs> uh, third, fifth, and first. Wow, this this draft is crazy right now. We got like rookie fever because Henry Ruggs just went in the ninth. Uh, Jalen Rager went in the ninth, which isn't bad. We got Brandon Cooks, Rob Gronkowski. It's like such a dichotomy because like we have a lot of rookies being reached on, and then a lot of veterans too. Looks like reached on based on draft need. Yeah, based on the guy's team makeup, that Gronk pick doesn't make all that much sense to me like the guy doesn't have a second quarterback so it's gonna be hard yeah. for him to contend and you're choosing Gronkowski when instead of a quarterback so I mean, yeah he also went he also went Leonard Fournette so he's committed <laughs> where did yeah, Leonard Fournette go in this draft guys. in the third third yeah way too early uh for my taste actually AJ yeah, Green dynasty my uh my fucking headphones are going absolutely nuts right now I hope it's not recording it like that it sounds like you guys are recording from outer space <laughs> Mike's really? sounds good on my end. You do too, so it should be. All if right. I unplug though, I think it hears you through the computer, and it'll be fucking uh, echoey. So uh, we've got ourselves a problem, boys. 
All right. Uh, how many rounds do we want to do this? How many starting spots we got? Don't we just finish up to? Should we just finish up to fifteen? I don't know. I just I have a round to fifteen, but we can do a stop at twelve. Let me see my roster. We need yeah. two more wide receivers to fill out our roster, so we can do up to twelve, I guess. Teddy Bridgewater, pick. I think Teddy Bridgewater is actually a. I've come around on him a little bit just based on the offensive weapons around him. Yeah, like either ever dude, been I'm, good. I, I, too I many feel like he's a great like fucking startup pick. Mm -hmm. At least yeah, the, the value he, that he's at, man. I, I like I said, man. I I can't be higher on DJ Moore after like what I was looking at today. I just feel like that offense yeah. is gonna. Uh, they might not be good as a team, but they're gonna put up a lot of fucking points because their defense is gonna be so bad too. Yeah. Then again, it could be like that Eli pick from a few years back, where it's like they have Saquon Barkley and OBJ, and then he sucks, and they all do well. Like yeah. you can make that argument both ways. For sure. That, I mean, that that was my argument before. I was like, dude, this feels a lot like Eli, but I do feel like Teddy is better than at least Eli, like shell of Eli uh, during that time. Fuck. And, someone's and about ten six. Massive value. That's crazy. Rob Gronkowski went before Tannehill. <laughs> I know. Rob, I mean, Raheem Mostert went before Tannehill. It's like these guys <laughs> are going a, a bit too crazy. super high on him. Like, what if they just bring in Devonta Freeman for a little <laughs> reunion and run him into the ground? What are we looking at here? We got – we're looking at wide receiver here. Not looking great. Uh, I think I think Sterling Shepard – Dude, is someone dying over there, Nick? What's going on? Uh, yes, Michael. The New York City is not the best place to be living in. Right <laughs> Are you in the middle of a protest, basically? Hey, you want a yeah. What's up? Who am I saying what's up from? <laughs> For real, the entire protest is going down my fucking street right now. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, Justin Herbert. That's what they're protesting. He just went off the board. <laughs> I thought they were going to come in here. And like, Juana, they asked if I was on a radio station. I was like, yes, and immediately regretted that. He's going to be like, we want to <laughs> fucking come on there. <laughs> Holy shit, Adam. You scared the shit out of me. You said like the whole fucking protest just went down the street. Was that from B-Side? Or no? Was that from B-Side Pizza? No. No. No, we're in the middle of it. Sorry. We're almost, we're almost wrapped up. What do we got right now? Uh, Water's super thin. Here, here's what I propose, guys. I think we should. Do oh fuck! I was gonna say click Gardner Minshew. We just got taken one, one pick ahead of us. Let's You're trying to still go for quarterbacks right now? You're just thinking yeah, rack up yeah. the value. Yeah, because like when you like, there's you can always just trade quarterbacks or wide receivers. It's is like there, any, is there anyone trade. worthwhile right now on the quarterback list still? Uh, Tyra. That's about it. Uh, you got Big Ben, uh, Derek Carr. Um, Honestly, with all these quarterbacks, I think the only one I would want, and probably it's a little bit too early, would be Cam Newton. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. Cam I don't think I want to take any of the one-year rental guys, to be honest. Yeah. Who, who uh, do we got on wide receiver list? Anyone good? Sterling Shepard, Brandon Ayuk, Darius Slayton, Ryan Edwards, Jamison Crowder. It's actually a pretty decent value. Mm. I don't hate Slayton here. Yeah, I don't hate I don't Slayton. Hate I don't hate Ayuk either, to be honest. I know you don't like Ayuk, Mike. Nah, I, I mean, at this at this price, I'm fine with it. You're looking over at... Nikhil Harry, though. The guy that outproduced him in his own college. Oh you guys, no, you guys I didn't, didn't fucking Nikhil, say he was still on. I forgot. I would I would go. Uh, I'm, I'm down to double tap those wide receivers if you want Slayton and Harry. All right. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Wait, is Deontay still on the board? Nah, he got Ooh. picked at the eight four. Yeah. He's uh. I'm probably not gonna have any more of him going forward. Probably it's going gonna be really hard to. Yeah. I, he's someone I'll diversify with. Like I'll draft him in one or two spots, but like you're not going to be able to get him anywhere at value anymore. I yeah. hope he's not Curtis Samuel this year. Like the, all oh. the hype is stemming from him being a good route runner, and then he's going to be stuck with like Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges again after week three. <sighs> That'd be fucking devastating. <laughs> Sony Michelle, Jesus Christ, I guess still plays. <laughs> Imagine he just fucking balled out this year. <laughs> he probably will. He's put up like a thousand yards somehow last year. Should we pause it after twelve? Uh, and after both. Let's make our next two picks and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, okay. so we have a deeper roster than everybody else. Nice. Mm -hmm. Even looking at some of the other receivers, like they're older guys, but with the core that we've built, you can still take a chance on like a Julian Edelman here or yeah. a Marvin Al Jones. Shunker. Marvin Jones, man. Nah, he went early. He went at the 9 11. Oh, shit. 
Damn it, that's way too early. But it looks like people are paying attention at least. But even like a Golden Tate, like if we wouldn't, if we didn't go Slayton, I feel like that would be a decent pick in like the 12th or 13th round because he is like the number two receiving, number two or number three receiving weapon in that offense. They're gonna be thrown because they have zero defense. That's I think those are the types of picks we need though right now because we went so running yeah. back heavy. We're, we just need guys who will produce this year. Like yeah. Harry and Slayton, we don't know what kind of production they're gonna give, but a guy like I, I, I honestly don't hate going back to Golden Tate here just because I think he will produce this year. Yeah, I, and I, I would rather go Sterling Shepard though over Golden Tate. I think because you can get like three games out of him. Yeah, or or actually, I I do really like Jameson Crowder. If you if you like if you need wide receiver production this year, I think like Sam Darnold's still going to go to where he's most comfortable, and that's that's Jameson Crowder. I was looking at his numbers from this past year. He had a game where he had 14 receptions for 99 yards. <laughs> yeah, was, was I, like, I remember the first like three Jameson weeks. Crowder. Yeah, the first couple of weeks with Darnold before yeah. he got sick, he was like getting PPR 200 just, targets a game. Yeah, Philip Lindsay at the 11 11. I like that pick. Tony Pollard at 11 12. Yeah, this is uh, Zach Moss. Where's uh, yeah. Miko Hardman? I'm assuming went off the board already. Yeah, yeah. 11 3. Damn, yeah. I honestly would have taken Hardman over Slayton probably if I remembered he was on the board. What about uh, you would oh. take Hardman over Slayton? I think so, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Rugs, uh, Rugs went off at 9 8. Wow. We got Brian Edwards. I think we're going to try and hopefully oh, there just, you go. he just got Nine fucking five. schnoiked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do like. I think I like Jameson Crowder because he kind of rounds out our roster as that wide receiver three flex play. Is that wide that receiver we can six? We just have to <laughs> in the wide receiver two, three, four, and five before we take Crowder. <laughs> <laughs> but if Brandon Ayuk makes it back, oh damn, Preston Williams is gone too. I was about to say. If Julian Edelman makes it back, I think that's a decent pick. Yeah. Ooh, KJ Hamler, love that. Oh, we also got your boy Devin Duvernay down there if you want. Nah, bench staff roster. Do <laughs> he doesn't want right. to put that, that evil on him now. <laughs> I would stand for him until it's my time to pick him. <laughs> yeah, this I think one I, quarterback still, Jared Glow. I don't think he knows the super flex. <laughs> Man. No, he knows. He picked Matt Ryan in the fourth, so he definitely knows. Yeah, but he took Chris Carson in the fifth. There so. goes Dwayne Haskins, <laughs> my man. Bold <laughs> <laughs> move. B. Chris, man, only has one also. What do you think we're going to see from Dwayne Haskins this year? Uh, I think we're going to see some improvement. I mean, he literally the worst situation last year. He's like Josh Rosen 2.0. He was just like thrown into such a shit situation with not many weapons around him. I mean, he has to take a step forward. If he doesn't improve this year, then he's as good as gone in that offense. Yeah. Fuck, okay. Brandon, you has gone. Thank you. All right. I think we should take take Jordan Love because I think the value is there. Over uh, Hurts? You want, to, you want to take Love over... I thought Hurts was gone. Is Hurts still there? No, nah, Hurts is still there. Okay. I would... I, I would like almost, do- I would almost double-click both of them, but if you want to get a wide receiver, we can go wide receiver QB. Who but like, I just, who's that wide receiver we, right now? We get Edelman here to pair with Robert Woods for like the next one to two years while everybody else develops like Nikhil Harry and Slayton. That would just like keep us in a contending window. I'm not mad about, about taking the whole... Patriots wide receiver little thing there because I think one of them I think Edelman will produce this year I think he's just going to be a safety valve and probably get like eight targets a game not going to be good or efficient but I think it'll be enough to give us some production in that wide receiver two spot and then hopefully if Nikhil Harry you know becomes a player that we think he will um, we'll be sitting pretty good there yeah let me look up Philip Dorsett too I'll get him on a team stop <laughs> stop what you're doing <laughs> uh, I Edelman so, and so Mike what what do you want to do uh, if you're rusty, me, like, board. I would literally just double tap Jalen Hurts and uh, and Jordan Love. And How many times do you think we said double tap this episode? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. He double taps. It's it. like we're trying to fucking heart and eye message over here. What do you think of Mike Kosicki here? Uh, I hate Mike Kosicki. I think he's trash. Jeez. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> he's not good. I mean, I, I, the thing is, like. This Dolphins offense is not going to support a top twelve tight end like in two top twenty four wide receivers, right? So, if I'm going to make Along a bet, the I'm RB one overall. <laughs> yeah, do you want to double tap the group. Miami receiving group? Get Tua <laughs> and uh, Mike Kosicki stack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I'm like a full fade on Mike Kosicki. I don't really understand the hype at all, but um, I, I would rather I'd much rather go like a veteran wide receiver that can actually help us produce than Mike Kosicki. How about Edelman and Tate? You just get the old guys to replace. Get the both guys. the old slot guys. You think Tate over Crowder? I love that. We have the young guys coming up as yeah. soon as those two are done. 
Once they're dead, Slate we just have to Tate, meet Harry Edelman. Alright, hit it. A little taint action. Animal, you want to see the board? What are you doing? Bye weeks are going to stink. Come look at it. Animal, Tim Patrick's still there. It's so funny how different, like... We were just talking about how crazy... Like... There. But, yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Scott's about to bend over snacks. Let's... I'm, I'm oh. excited for this. They're both right here. Snacks are oh, right shit. Here. I, didn't even, I didn't even see them. <laughs> snacks is... Are you pulling down your pants yet? For this Godfather? Did you trade with Scott? Oh. He just sent me two offers. I declined, though. Snacks, yeah. if you trade with him before you trade with me, then we're no longer friends. Same, dude. Same. If you I trade with him before dude. you trade with... No, no, that won't happen. Actually, it would 100% happen, but... <laughs> <laughs> didn't you, didn't you, didn't you trade... Offer. Didn't you give, give uh, Zeke to Scott for like two second round picks or yeah, something? I, I didn't get much back. <laughs> <laughs> but Zeke's off my team. So really that was the win. That was the value that prop. Getting Zeke <laughs> off the team. That story during the, the draft was the funniest thing I've ever heard when nobody would trade with him except for second round picks and he just kept accepting them. <laughs> Wait, where are we wrapping up right there? Uh, Yeah, we'll just pause it at the end of the round. All right. <laughs> Van Jefferson. Dude, Van Jefferson sucks, guys. Don't draft him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's older than the guys picked around him. Well, Sterling Shepard's kind of old, but he's probably older than, older than Curtis Samuel. He's older than everyone in that round. He's probably older than Philip Rivers. Don't fact check me Definitely. on that. The Limbound Jr. Love that. He's just like one of those guys where like I just want him on my teams, and I know he's probably not going to produce fantasy, but if he does, going to be fucking. He's going to be somewhere. He's going to be someone that everyone talks about for four years and just never <laughs> yeah. does fucking anything. He was like me this summer, <laughs> Jalen Rashard. I yeah. remember I put up like those charts, and you're like, no fucking way, and you looked it up, and then he just did nothing all season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like is always gonna be a guy that everyone just make excuses for. I like that Paris Campbell at thirteen eleven though. That's a nice fucking value pick. Definitely after Emmanuel Sanders too. All right, Mike is right. trash. We're, All right. We're gonna wrap it up there. Um, so obviously our our strategy was very very running back heavy in the forefront, and again like we tend to do that because we see the value. Like if you look at rounds four through six compared to the first three rounds, it's it's blue and the top is completely green. So you got to look at the trends when you're drafting. And like, if you're starting to draft now, especially doing mock drafts, you'll be able to kind of stay on top of the trends and see where guys go. But in dynasty startups, you'll see values scatter all over the fucking place. So you kind of always have to be ready to uh, make moves to get your guys or, you know, start pivoting away from strategies that you originally went into the draft with. Yeah. I yeah, mean, look at, look at the guys value right? here. Cause there weren't too many like quarterback runs. If you look at the board, there weren't too many red picks in a row, which is kind of different from what I've seen. Like in most drafts I've been in, the second round is littered with quarterbacks, and like the fourth and fifth are just completely red on the board. This didn't happen here, so guys like Allen Robinson weren't as big of values as they typically are. But uh, this is not to say this is an atypical board, but I don't know I think this is helpful to see maybe how your draft is going to play out if you're in a league with other people that may not be used to super. I flex think depth I think start. it's more of the mock draft thing. I think it's like people get excited about exciting players and they just want like they don't if you're in a real draft you're like ah, i need to draft a quarterback here because this is yeah. actually my team for the future so you'd see a lot more quarterbacks in red go off the board earlier whereas if you're in a mock draft you don't actually fucking care about your team so you're just like oh i just want the exciting name see a, like a stacked roster i'll just get a quarterback in like round eight or nine i think that's kind of a product of it so in real drafts i think you'll see a lot more quarterbacks go a lot earlier yeah i'll tell you what if, if i was like just doing this draft with uh just like going fucking bonkers I would have went like Joe Burrow, Tua, instead of Robert Woods. I probably would have gone like Matthew Stafford, <laughs> uh, Kirk Cousins. And then at the at the turn there, I probably would have went like bang, bang on uh, Jalen Hurts and Jordan Love. I would have like seven, Jeez. eight quarterbacks. You're and I would just tap go and double yeah. tap, yeah. Huh? Double, tap. <laughs> I would double tap it. Because, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's June, right? I'm not I'm literally not even worried about starting rosters at all. Uh, until like later on, so I'd be looking to flip quarterbacks a little bit later. But I think we got pretty good balance, right? We got veteran wide receivers, we got young and upcoming uh, wide receivers, we got you know an absolute the, the biggest stud running back plus three stud rookies. Um, this is like a team where I mean I don't I wouldn't expect us to win year one, but I think in like year you know year two, like year three, it's going to be really hard to beat a team like ours. Yeah, like we're, we're, we're going to the chip next year and we're winning the chip the year after, guaranteed. <laughs> all right, uh, that's all we got for today, right? Yep. All right, yep. so make sure that y'all, one, leave us a review and rating if you are listening via iTunes. Make sure you follow these two clowns as well as myself. If you want to, you will be entered into the draft guide giveaway. Um, and we'll be back next Wednesday as well as our Don't Fuck This Up Friday video 
which we do every Friday in the draft guide. So if you have not caught the draft guide yet, make sure you do that on Big Dog's Draft Guide. Dot com. And we're out. So hit that thumbs up button. Peace. Peace. Peace.